this is Zai Man, and um, so I got a request to do cheat computer tutorials, and that was a while ago, but I decided I could do it, and there are also not that many tutorials on it, so I decided I'd do one. So, um, Petite Computer is now currently off the eShop, or DSI Wear Shop, I guess. Well, I don't know if it's still on the DSI one, but it's off the 3DS shop, because a new one is coming in the spring called Smile Basic, and I'll probably do a tutorial on that, but for now, I'll do a Petite Computer tutorial, so, alright. Okay, so the first thing you want to do to create a new program is press Write Program. Okay, so now what you want to do is here, this right here, as you can see, there's the Run button and the Edit button. Right now we're on Run mode, and this is basically, um, um, the, this isn't where you write your programs, this is where you can just, like, do basic commands and stuff and run the code. So basically, if you wanted to do something like, um, print... So this is going to be the first thing you need to know is how to do print. So um, I'm not going to do it in the code actually, but I'm just going to do it in like the in. This is basically a command module, except for um, pretty computer. So this is the run mode. So if you pr say print, um, hello, petite computer. And it doesn't have an E in it, so I'd have to go spell that correctly. And now what you want to do is exclamation mark and then close quotation marks. So that's how you make something print out online. And so now if you press enter or A, press enter, it says hello petite computer. Okay, and that marks the end of the program. So now if you wanted to do more than just one command at a time, if you wanted to do a whole bunch of things, then you would go into edit mode. And that's actually how you write code. So basically what you can do in edit mode is um, write big programs and write all your code. And um, you can go into the help menu to, if you're not sure of something, um, how to do some code if you want to. Um, know some parameters for a command or something like that, then you go into help. Um, but yeah, there's basically a text editor on the bottom screen, and you may think that that looks a little hard to use, but it's actually very easy once you get the hang of it. So the first thing we're going to type into our first program is CLS, and that's going to be on its own line. What CLS does is, if you go into run mode, you can see all this text above it, it will clear that all out. So CLS basically clears all the text from the screen. And then um, we can type something else after that. But um, CLS is also useful if you already ran the program and there's a bunch of text there. Or if you don't want it to print out a bunch of lines, you want to clear it, then write a new line of text. And so, yeah, we'll do CLS to clear all the text. And then we'll do print... thing we just typed in there. Hello, petite computer. And now, if you go into run mode, you see it didn't start. And that's because what you have to do is press run. You can also type run, but it's easier because they have a shortcut right there. Press it. And now, just press enter. And it'll run it. And that's all we have so far. And you see it cleared off everything else and just wrote, hello, petite computer. So that's the first line of code, or the first two, I guess you could say. And so now I'm going to show you what variables are. So if you've done any programming language before, you probably know what a variable is. It's um, uh, something that stores a value. And it's not actually that value. So you could say, um, it's a basically a word that stores a value. So, first of all, I'm going to show you how to make it a word value in this video. So, let's save. 
var is going to be our variable. And then to say that it's a word one, we will press this dollar sign. So that makes it the, the program know that it knows that it's a word variable. And now we can say var equals, or maybe space equals, so that it's a little more organized. And then you can say something, but you have to put it in quotation marks, just like in print, when you try to print something. So you're going to say var equals, and then you can say, um, welcome to, um, and then if you do that, wait, let's just make it welcome. Okay, so it's going to be var equals welcome, and then we can print out this thing. So print, we don't need to put it in quotation marks, because if we did, um, then we it would print out actually the characters V-A-R dollar sign. But what we wanted to do is print out welcome, because that's what var is equal to. So let's type V-A-R, and then we need to put the dollar sign right there, so it knows that it's a text one. And so that it knows it's a variable. So now, if we press run, run, it'll say, hello, computer, welcome, because that's what var equals. Okay, so now, I'll show you, hmm, I'll show you how to add something after the variable when you print it out. So, say, you don't want it to just say welcome, you want it to say welcome to petite computer. So what you could do is print var and then um, dollar sign space and then in quotation marks what you want it to print out after that. So if we say welcome to, and then we should probably put a space here so that it knows to make a space. Welcome space to petite computer. In quotations. So then what that should do is print out what var equals what welcome and then it'll also print out to petite computer. So if we do this hello petite computer and then the next few lines welcome to petite computer. Alright so now that you have that you want to make your games actually games and actually interactive so that it can actually do something instead of you just seeing stuff appear. So, first of all, let's um, add some text um, that you can type in, and then I'll use that text to type something else. So, let's have it ask for your name, and then it'll say hello, and then it'll say your name. So, if you put in size any man as your name, then it would be, then it would ask what's your name, you type in size any man, and then it would say hello size any man. So now let's do that. So let's add the code to do that. So if you want to get input based off a question, you do input and in quotes what you want to ask them. So what is your name? And they'll automatically add the question mark. And then you have to add a new variable that you want to be your name. Uh, that you want to be the variable for your name. So it doesn't need to be defined earlier. We can just define it now. So then it'll be name. But we have to put a um, semicolon before it. Name. Dollar sign. Enter. And then what we can do is we want it to print out hello and then your name. So we could do print hello and then name dollar sign because that's the variable. So now if we press run. Hello, petite computer. Welcome to petite computer. What is your name? And then you can say, says any man. Well, that's my name. So then, enter. Hello, says any man. And we forgot to add this space. So, if 
have the space right there. And when we do it this time, it should add the space before. It. So now, hello, says anyone. All right, so what if you think that this is all too overwhelming to see at the same time? Hello, petite computer. Welcome to petite computer. What is your name? You might want to add some weight in between them, so some pause in between when it says that. Like characters and games, pause between saying other things. So what we can do is we can go to this line. And this line, press enter to make a new line, and then say wait. This basically creates a pause. And then if you wanted to wait one second, it'd be 60. Because 60 is one second, because this device runs on 60 frames per second. And then, so if we do wait 60, you'll wait one second. And then you can do any multiple of 60 to get any amount of seconds. So if we do wait 60, then add that to all our lines. So this line doesn't print anything out, so we'll put it after this next line. And we can also do is put right there. So now we can do wait 60 and then do that again. Wait 60. Or let's not do that because you already typed your name, so it already has a weight. So, so now what it should do is clear the screen, print hello petite computer, wait 60 frames or one second, um, print welcome to petite computer, wait 60 frames or one second, input, um, you type in the input and then it'll print it back out with no wait. So if we do run, clears the screen, hello petite computer, and then you, so you can see there's a wait between everything. And then you can make that wait longer if you wanted to. And then as you see, there's break in seven. That just means if you press stop in the middle of the program before it's over. So if you wanted to make the break, the wait longer, you could go wait. 120 that'd be two seconds and as you can see there's a two second wait so it's a little longer for you to do all this all right so i think that's about it for this tutorial um next time i'll teach you a little more about on text-based stuff and then maybe sometime in the future we can get into graphics and actual games so all right um bye and i will see you in the next video